YouTube. What's going on? <clears throat> Vikings are 6-0 and after their glorious victory over the Ravens. Um, <sighs> there's always something criticized after every game. And everyone wants to talk about how the Vikings needed the Ravens to uh, miss a field goal in order to win the game. Yeah, well, the Ravens needed the Vikings to have two of their cornerbacks injured to get back in the game by scoring three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. I mean, the Vikings were taking the Ravens back to the woodshed and learning them what for. I was really encouraged by the dominant performance early, and I think that these late-game collapses can be avoided with two things. One, healthy players. <clears throat> Obviously, and there's nothing really Minnesota can do about that other than just, you know good training, and uh, quick healing and uh, stuff like that. But the other thing is to not let off the gas so much on offense. Um, the offense was hardly spending any time on the field, whether it was a three and out or a huge pass down the field to gain a chunk of yards in one play, but then kicking a field goal because he couldn't convert on a, and get another first down after that. The defense did not have enough time to rest, and they were back on the field again. You look at the time of possession in the second half, and, man, Minnesota's defense was on the field a lot. And tired players just have a hard time defending. Defenses wear out quicker than offenses because every every player on the defense is a part of every play, or it can be. But the offense knows what's going to happen, and there are some guys who know that they're not going to get the ball, and, and they don't even necessarily have specific blocking. I mean, you know, <clears throat> defenses wear down quicker than offenses, so that's what was going on there. Um, Winfield, looks like, is going to be out this week. Uh, Benny Sapp got a concussion, I believe. Uh, something, anyway, got hurt and left the game. They had Carl Pema out there, and he was not hired to be a cornerback. He was hired to be a special teams guy. And I think that they should put um, rookie Asher Allen out on the field in Antoine Winfield's absence. Uh, give him some playing time. You know, he's a third rounder uh, and a promising guy. So, anyway, I thought the victory over the Ravens was encouraging. Um, I didn't like the end. I hope that the coaches learn these lessons and change their play calling later in the year when it matters more. The Vikings got out with a win, so it's fine, but it was a game that's sort of a wake-up call for the play calling for the offense. So hopefully that will get corrected before um, it ends up costing the Vikings an important game late in the season or a playoff game if they make it. Okay, the Steelers. <clears throat> I'm worried about the Steelers game, and here's why. Ben Roethlisberger leads the lead in passing yards right now. Heinz Ward leads the league in receiving yards. Um, he's got like 600. Up until now, Minnesota's been really good at shutting down the number one wide receiver for the other team. But with injuries in the secondary, I don't think that's going to be true any longer. I think that we're going to see less tight end success by the opponents and more wide receiver success by the opponents. So everyone's excited about Heath Miller this game, but I think Heinz Ward and San Antonio Holmes are going to be causing most of the damage against Minnesota this game. Um, and also, Ben Roethlisberger matches up well against Minnesota's strength, which is its pass rush. Uh, Roethlisberger's a big guy. He's able to move around, and uh, pass rush doesn't bother him the way it bothers some other quarterbacks. So Minnesota's got to be really aggressive if they're going to win that battle. Um, but the the reason I think the Vikings have hope for this game is um, because Brett Favre matches up to Pittsburgh's strength, which is um, creative defenses designed to confuse uh, the other quarterback. <clears throat> Favre is no spring chicken. He's seen it all, and I don't think the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is going to be able to confuse him the way that they can confuse some younger or less experienced quarterbacks. So that's a good thing. Uh, two, <sighs> Troy Polamalu is back, but with that MCL, he's, he looks limited. 
to me. He did not look full speed uh, against the Browns, and he didn't need to be. But um, even against the Vikings, I don't think it's going to be the same as it was when he's 100%. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's something to be grateful for as a Vikings fan this week. Um, and the third reason to hope is uh, Tomlin may play Willie Parker. Um, <laughs> ben Hall is the threat. Willie Parker is done, in my opinion. And Maloli Moore, eh, might do some good things against his old team. He used to be a Viking. But Mendenhall, I think, is the one to watch out for. Um, Willie Parker used to be a threat to the Vikings because he's a fast outside runner, and that's exactly what gets him. Um, I said that about uh, the Baltimore game before it happened, that Ray Rice uh, was who I was worried about and Todd Heap. And Heap didn't make a whole lot of noise, but Rice was huge in that game. So they may think Willie Parker is the guy but I don't think he's fast enough anymore. And Mendenhall is uh, sort of a bruiser up the middle. Uh, I still will wait to believe it until I see it happening against the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm not worried too much about the running game, but the passing game is dangerous. <sighs> not that anyone who has any power over the Vikings is watching this or cares, but I have suggestions on how to win this game. The offense needs to drive slowly. The first two drives against Baltimore show how dominant the Vikings can be, and eating clock is what keeps the defense fresh. Long bombs uh, don't take enough time off the clock, and they're not necessary, and they could wear out Favre's arm over the course of a year. We all remember how he broke down last year as a member of the Jets. Well, also, he had a lot more passing attempts per game because the team overall asked him to do more than the Vikings need him to do. So I would, I, it's fun to watch Favre go, but I'd like to see short passes and lots of runs, sustained drives, eat clock, and drive the field. Um, and the defense suggestion here is to get after Ben Roethlisberger. I know he, mat, like I said, he matches up well to that strength of the Vikings, the pass rush, but if they are able to rattle him, uh, and he starts changing his technique, he starts feeling pressure that's not there, he starts to get paranoid, that is huge. Uh, and that can give the Vikings uh, a real shot at winning this game. Um, Heinz Ward is a physical wide receiver, and I, I wish Winfield were playing because I'd like to see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ward, bump him off the line, and be physical with him when he needs to but it looks like Winfield's going to rest. And I'm okay with that because he's an important part of the defense and they get to need him next week against the Packers um, more than they need him this week against the Steelers. This game is not a must-win. The Vikings are 6-0. and They're well ahead of anyone else in the division. Uh, the Steelers are an AFC team. It's just not that important as far as seeding and uh, tiebreakers and stuff like that at the end of the year to determine who's where in the playoffs. Um, if the Vikings win, I think it's going to be close. Uh, and I still see Roethlisberger is throwing for more yards than Favre does, maybe like the mid-200s to Favre's low-200s. Um, but the key is going to be Favre keeping it to zero or just one interception. And um, whatever he throws make Roethlisberger throw one more than that, so either one or two interceptions. Uh, if that happens and Minnesota runs well and Pittsburgh doesn't, or Minnesota gets after uh, Ben Roethlisberger and rattles him up, the Vikings have a chance to win the game. But you know what? It's in Heinz Field. Yeah, it's an AFC game. The Vikings have a great record so far. I, I could really see the Vikings losing this game, and it, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's just it's a losable game. Um, in the in you know all that matters in the playoffs is that you're there. Everyone is zero and zero once you get to the playoffs. And seeding is important, but the difference between 16 and 0 and 14 and 2 or whatever it happens to be, 12 and 4, <clears throat> doesn't matter. So um, that said, I, I'm I'm not necessarily calling for a Vikings victory, um, but I will predict the Vikings win something close.
close and something kind of low scoring 24-23. We'll see what happens. Alright, thanks for watching.